<laughs> Sorry. Um, so this is Grace. Um, so Grace uh, is only about eight months old. Um, so she came in from a road accident uh, when her mum was hit by a car. So she came in about a month ago now and she's gaining weight pretty well and loves her bottle and pretty much just sleeps all the time. Hey, Chad. She looks very well looked after, I have to say. Grace looks like she has a very nice life there. <laughs> when things were bad, it was just hard going. It was really hard going. Um, there were days I didn't know which way to turn. Um, you would just get sent, on, sent out on taskings and trying to complete those taskings, stay safe, you know, safe properties and, and whatnot was very, very challenging. Um, and Mike, was it the scale of it or was it the, the weather conditions? Was it the, the intensity? What was the things that you found really, really difficult about it? The whole lot, the absolute whole lot. Um, you know, look, if you turned, if you talked in terms of weather, William, Kate, I, I've never seen weather like that. Now, I've been firefighting for 20 years. I've, 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 I've done a few dust ups and to go and have something basically chase you quicker than you can get away from it. Uh, um, and that's what it was like some days. It must be terrifying, Mike. And, and how many of you were, were having to tackle this monster and, and what were the resources like for you guys to manage all that? Once it all got scaled up, it was terrific. It was, to, it was, it was a great example of, uh, of humankind coming to aid others that just could not take on the tasking that we had. Um, and when you had time to breathe and sit back and have a look at it, it was, it was pretty good to, a pretty good feeling. Am I right in saying you're a volunteer, so therefore you're, you're running a business, are you, at the same time as you're doing all this? I basically took about four and a half weeks off work to go and just devote my time to being part of the effort that was needed. Um, I was very lucky. My, uh, my beautiful wife covered for me as far as um, getting back to customers and saying, look, Michael's a little bit busy today. Do you think he could come another, another time? <laughs> which had to, hap had to happen on a number of occasions. You had a good pair of hands helping you out, Mike, which is, is important. Oh, yeah. She's a good boss lady. It's, um, <laughs> it's, um, long as I, long as I behave, she, she helps me out. Quite right. Good team effort. Love it. Our, our initial range of jobs included provision of fresh drinking water for the township. They'd exhausted almost all of their reserves of fresh water just in fighting fires. So it was a pretty desperate situation where a community like Kings Cove is, uh, is literally trying to marshal its water resources. Uh, we were just one part of a big machine though, I have to say. Quite a phenomenal national effort was underway to provide the resources that the community and the local and state resources needed to, be, uh, to have to get at the task. A uh, tremendous effort, I have to say, my, um, my heart went out to the local community members. It was such a trying time for them but it was an absolute privilege to be able to help. Well, I think both Catherine and I would say to you and Mike and to your teams, what a you know, fantastically brilliant job you guys did in sounds like some of the most difficult circumstances. Um, and I, I think you should be very proud of yourselves and, and, and how much effort went into this. And unfortunately, um, in the fires, we lost our home, um, all the infrastructure on the farm. So all the shearing sheds and workshops, um, majority of the fencing, um, all the plant and equipment and um, unfortunately we also lost half the livestock um, on the farm as well so um, my husband yeah it was it was a pretty horrific sight um, when we came when I came back to the farm the next morning um, but I left prior to the fire coming through um, earlier in the day with the children yeah it was a, it was a pretty um, traumatic time looking back at it now um, but we've had so much support um, from strangers as well as so much from our family and friends in the community. So um, we're really thankful for um, the support we've had. It's, it's helped us to get through. Uh, we're still, we're, we're obviously in the rebuilding stage still um, on the farm property and we haven't really thought too much about um, building another house yet. We sort of just want to get our business um, back and operational and uh, a shearing shed up so we can shear the sheep and all of those sorts of things. And how, how are your kids with it? 
as well. I mean, it's sort of really yeah. tough for you, you know, with the business and, and everything, but also trying to sort of manage, manage the sort of their worries and their fear as well. How are they yeah. doing now? I've been pleasantly surprised at how well they have been coping. Um, I guess um, I feel like there's actually been quite a lot of children affected. I guess um, they're not alone. Um, and so they can relate to other kids that have going through this. And there's been so much support through the school and for us parents as well, um, which has really helped out. Very pleased to hear that your life's rebuilding, uh, you know, after what must have been a very traumatic and very difficult, you know, few months of this year. So um, we're really pleased to hear that you're smiling again. And it's, um, you know, you've got, you've got plans in place to sort of rebuild and, and, and put your life back together again. Peter, I gather you were, you were a bee owner on the island, is that right? And you, you, you lost quite a few of your hives, is that correct? Up until that day, we had not lost any of our 1,100 hives, but that day we lost 500, just over 500 hives. Uh, they were all full of honey because it had been Christmas, New Year, and um, we probably lost 20-odd 20, 20 tonne of honey that one day. You know, my, my son lost all of his livestock, all of his vehicles, except uh, one ute, and... Um, yeah, so it's been fairly tough. It's so sad to hear your story and also so much loss as well. I mean, I, you know, physically you've lost so much, but emotionally as, as well, you need to see your livelihood, your personal possessions, your business and, and everything um, being taken away from you in such a quick way as well. We've got to learn from what's happening in, in uh, California. We've got to learn what we experienced from what we experienced last summer and we've got to change and we've got to manage better for things that we can do to uh, reduce fuel loads and reduce the risk to the community. No, you're right. There's, there's a lot we need to do globally as well to tackle this and, and to, to bring awareness to, the, to the, the problem. And also, I think, like you say, protecting communities is an essential part of this, isn't it? Because it's, it's going to be rural communities predominantly who, who sadly take the brunt of a lot of these problems and these issues around the world. So um, it's very important, like you said, that we, we talk to and, and help protect communities. And my husband Sam and I uh, own the wildlife park here and when all the fires started we had uh, essentially all of the wildlife from the fires uh, coming through. Uh, it was mostly koalas. We had over 600 koalas come through during the whole, se uh, whole bushfire um, season. And there was probably about 100 kangaroos and wallabies, um, possums, echidnas, uh, all sorts of different things. But yeah, out of those kind of 600 koalas, uh, we've now had about 250 go back to the wild, which is um, pretty incredible. What sort of damage was done, um, Donna, for the wildlife population? Was it, was it predominantly, like you say, koalas? Was, did, they, did they take a big impact from the fire? The fire was travelling that fast and that hard that it was absolutely unstoppable and that wasn't just for um, humans getting out, it was for the same for the animals as well. But the koalas, they essentially are just in their trees, they're not a fast animal, they don't have that method of getting away. Uh, so when they were hit, they were one of the hardest species hit on the island. Um, and unfortunately, well, prior to the fires, there was estimated around 60 to 80,000 koalas on Kangaroo Island. Uh, and since the fires now, they're doing surveys at the moment, but they're estimating the numbers only to be around five to 10,000. What? More than half the population. That's, mm. that's devastating. Yeah. How's, how's the country part being affected, you know, yourselves with the, with the business and, and, and caring for the animals and, and having tourists and stuff? Is that taking a big hit as well? Uh, we were shut for probably about two weeks all up um, because there was that many animals coming in. And then obviously we were hit with COVID as well. So um, like Peter, we were shut for um, around eight weeks all up for COVID as well before we reopened to tourists again. Yeah, nothing like you guys going through your wildfire and then a global pandemic coming along. It <laughs> doesn't help with... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, that said, it's um, yeah, made, a, made a big difference to tourism over here, that's for sure. Thank you so much for your time and, and, and for giving us an update and um, filling us in with the stories and, and what's been happening. We really appreciate your time and just fantastic to hear the community spirit once again down in Australia, as always, which is what Catherine and I see when we come down there. You always feel the, the community spirit and Aussies are very good at looking after each other and it's fantastic to see you're all you know, pulling together. And, and I'm really glad, you know, both Catherine and I are glad to hear that the support is there for you all as well. And 
as the brigadier touched on, you know, the mental health implications as well as the financial implications and, and, and all this on, on everyone is, is going to take its toll for a while. So I do hope all of you feel that you've, you've got that support, you've got someone you can speak to, you've got somewhere you can go and, and receive um, support, whether it's financial, or whether it's um, just having a chat. Um, so please do look after yourselves. And um, hopefully, Catherine and I, one day when the world goes back to whatever kind of normality we have in the future, um, we can come and visit you all and, and come and see Kangaroo Island for ourselves.